flavor ngayong hapon. Uh, kasi habang nagpipresi daddy, niisip ko, naku, parang nagagawa uh, ata ng report card kagabi yung mga teacher. Ha, para, <laughs> medyo hirap. Ha, pero uh, yun po yung, uh, sin- yung point kaninang umaga that we are stewards even of our, stewards even of our time. Kaya nga po, mas maganda every time na magkakaroon ng service, we will give our best. Hindi lang po yung mga umaawit, hindi lang yung mga nagpipreach, kung hindi pati yung mga nakikinig. We'll give their best uh, uh, in listening, in uh, trying to see uh, what God has uh, in store for us during the message. So sana po, uh, ngayong gabi, uh, I, I'm supo- ah, ngayong gabi, yan o, nantok talaga ako ah. This afternoon, I was uh, supposed to preach on uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, but uh, I was, as I was praying for, um, for the message, I believe that uh, the Lord has led me to this message uh, this afternoon, and uh, we're going to uh, be studying uh, Ephesians chapter 5, uh, cha- verse 22 to 33, and may I, may I ask everyone to stand please, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 until 33 and let's read this um, I'll be reading it and uh, I would just like you to silently follow sa inyo po mga Bibles it says here verse 22 wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church for he is the save and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto Christ so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it. Excuse me. Even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for uh, giving us the privilege to once again look into your word and see principles that we will be able to apply. I pray, Lord, um, this afternoon as we study about the church, I pray, Lord, that you be the one to give me wisdom as I speak, and may you be the one to be glorified, dear Lord, and help each everyone that, uh, that will be listening. I pray, Lord, that if we see anything that we lack in our Christian life, I pray, Lord, that we will humbly accept that and uh, be able uh, and um, purpose to be a better Christian after the message. It will not only be uh, challenge, dear Lord, but after uh, the message, after every message that is preached behind the pulpit, will be changed as well for for the betterment of our Christian lives. Dear Lord, I pray that you uh, bless my, the words that I will be speaking. I pray, Lord, that I will not be a stumbling block to anyone, and I pray also, Lord, that uh, you will be helping each and every one be humble enough to submit our own lives, our own uh, desires and principles and thinking. Uh, into the word of God, dear Lord. I pray that we continue to glorify your name as we, uh, uh, as we go through our study this afternoon. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much for standing. Um, uh, today we're going to study about uh, Christ loved the church and He gave Himself for it. Christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. So uh, we're going to come back to this passage. This is actually uh, the, <coughs> the message uh, this afternoon. Uh, don't worry, I will not be talking about uh, uh, wife submission to the husband or whatever that is. Uh, although that, it's very important also to, to notice the comparison that uh, Paul gave uh, the relationship of Christ and the church and husband and wife. And uh, dadaanan din natin kahit ng konti yan, mamaya, kahit papano. But 
as a way of introduction, this message will be about the church. And as I have noticed that um, para po, uh, sa akin, this, uh, nowadays, church is not really that important anymore. I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about uh, people in, maybe in this room, but I'm talking about generally. Um, uh, because of our culture, because of our tradition, because of uh, this time that, that we are living in now, church is seen as just a parabang mall na pupuntahan every weekend. Okay? Uh, like people will, uh, parabang lalo na sa Pilipinas, we just got used to going to church every Sunday. Uh, whether you're a Baptist, you're an Evangelical, Protestant, or whatever, Filipinos uh, tend to go to church, lalo na sa umaga. And then after that, uh, family day na yung maghapon. So people see the church that way. Uh, Catholics see the church as uh, they have to go there in order to confess their sins and then continue to live their lives without being changed. But if we're going to read the Bible, the church is so much more than that. The church is so much more than the, just a place uh, just a place because the church are the people but the church is uh, something more than just some uh, something that you go to every Sunday you go to every uh, middle of the week and then you you try to be uh, to have fellowship with people and then try to catch up with friends the church is uh, so much more than that the Bible as we have read a while ago the Bible says Christ loves the church and and the proof of his love is he gave himself for it and how, how important is it that God, that Christ himself will, will, will give himself to the church? And uh, if, if you're, uh, w what my challenge this afternoon is simply, what is the church to you compared to what the church is to Christ? What is the church to you now? If you, look, if you really examine your heart, if you really examine your, your life, gaano ba importante sa iyo ang mga kapatiran? Gaano ba importante sa iyo ang simbahan? How important uh, are, are the church's activity to you? Yung mga Bible studies, yung mga ministries, yung, mga, yung, yung pagsali natin sa choir, yung pagsali natin sa outreach, gaano po ba kataas yun sa priority list natin? At, ka, kung, at kung, uh, sabihin na natin mataas siya, gaano pa dapat ba natin ito itaas? Sa, sa ating, sa ating uh, priority sa buhay because as I, as I see uh, and, and, uh, especially when I was studying in the Philippines for three years church para bang social place na lang social gathering na lang pagandahan na lang ng suot pag Sunday lalo na pagka nagkaroon na ng aircon ng church meron ng rason mag amerikana yung mga lalaki pagandahan ng necktie pagandahan ng long sleeve pagandahan ng dress tapos uh, kwentuhan ch minsan church lugar pa ng chismis Diba, diyan mo malalaman ng uh, uh, buhay ng buhay ng bawat member pero po mga kapatid gaano po ba talaga dapat kaimportante ang simbahan sa atin? You know, if we read the Bible, we see the importance of the church. We see the importance of the New Testament local church and we see people dying even from for the church. Ah, uh, babago tayo pumunta sa Bible, we see history, people died to protect the church. People died to protect what the church believes in. People, people uh, uh, do their best to protect it. Nakita po natin, uh, during the, the first generation uh, of Christians, believers, they were being persecuted. They were forced to go underground. And they did their best in order to protect the church, in order to protect each other. Ganyan pa po ba yung tingin natin sa simbahan? Is that the way you see the church? Ganyan po ba ang tingin natin sa mga kapatiran? Do we see, the, do we see each other as someone we need to protect? Do we see each other as someone we need to help? Do we see each other as someone we need to lift up? Do we see this group of people in this room right now as, as people that is worth dying for? Ganyan po ba ang tingin natin sa simbahan? And I hope and I pray after the message, we are going to be challenged uh, in that. First of all, uh, as a way of introduction, re reading the Bible, we see how important the church is. First is we see that Christ himself established the church. The Bible says in Matthew 16, 18, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If hindi pa ganun ka-importante sa'yo yung simbahan, knowing that it is Christ Himself who established the, the church and gave Himself for it, this, this should change your mind of how important the church is for you. Kaya nga po minsan nakakapagtaka bakit merong mga, merong mga uh, members na hindi nila naintindihan ang importansya ng church when God Himself read, uh, wrote in the Bible and, and let us know this impo the importance of the local church. Kaya nga po minsan, uh, as I see, the reason why hindi ganun ka-importante sa atin is because we don't read about it. 
It's because we don't read the Bible. If you just read the Bible every day, especially the New Testament, you will see that the church is very important to God Himself, to the apostles, to the early believers, that they are willing to do anything for the church. And if we are going to compare ourselves to them, wala pong comparison. Wala. Pagka po siguro may dumating dito at ipe-persecute tayo, sino kaya dito ang kayang tumayo para protektahan ng isa't isa? Sino kaya dito ang kayang tumayo at sabihin, maninindigan ako sa simbahan and I will stand on my faith and the church of God. You know, minsan po kasi we just take it for granted. Minsan po, pangit din yung comfort. Minsan pangit din po yung, uh, uh, yung para bang yung panahon natin na wala ng persecution. Kaya nagiging lax tayo sa faith. Kaya na, nagre-relax tayo, hindi na tayo masyadong nag-aaral ng saltaan ng Diyos. Para ba kasi hindi natin kailangan? Pero paano kung nandun tayo sa time ng persecution? Sa time ng, ng mga pinaghahanap ang ating mga leaders to, to be killed? Sa mga time na pinaghahanap tayo underground para tayo maikulong at mapatay, mapakain sa liyon, ma, mapakita sa mga tao na tayo pinaparusahan? If we live in those times, tsaka pa lang ba natin malalaman ang importansya ng salta ng Diyos at simbahan? Alam niyo po ba, the church is important whether there's persecution or not. The Bible is important whether there's persecution or not. Because the reason why the church in the Bible is important is because God says so. Wala na pong iba. Hindi po nakadepende yan sa sitwasyon. Hindi po nakadepende yan sa ating uh, circumstances. The church is important. May aircon o wala, maganda ang simbahan natin o hindi, ka, saan generation ka man na silang, kung saan ka mang bansa nagsisimba, the church is important. Okay, Christ established the church. Second one is second point is Christ loved the church and I'm just going to skip through this because that's what we're going to study later on. Third one is Christ is the head of the church. Bibilisan ko lang din dahil mamaya may kita rin natin yan. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. Hindi lang po ang ang Panginoong Hesus Kristo ang head ng simbahan but Jesus Christ is the head of all things. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Siya po ang, puno, ang, ating, ang ating head. Siya po ang dapat natin sumusunod, especially in the church. Christ is the head of the church. Siya ang nag-establish. Siya ang nangunguna sa simbahan. Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, the, the Bible says, That at the name of Jesus, that means the authority of that name, Jesus Christ, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Jesus Christ is the head of this world. He's the one. He's the one that everyone should bow to Him. Everyone will confess. And knowing that Jesus Christ is the head of this church, hindi ba dapat maging importante sa atin yun? Hindi po ba dapat bigyan natin ang mas marami pang importansya ang simbahan knowing that the head of this is Jesus Christ Himself? Hindi po ba pangit na alam natin ang, 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 ang nangunguna sa simbahan ay ang Panginoon sa Kristo pero wala tayong pakialam? Hindi po ba pangit yun? Kasi po minsan, nagkakaroon ng, uh, sa simbahan kaya nagkakaroon ng uh, minsan na uh, misunderstanding, pagtatalo kasi merong mga tao na seryoso sa simbahan, merong hindi. Hindi po ba, pagka isa, ikaw, passionate ka sa isang bagay, yung isang tao hindi, hindi kayo magkakaintindihan. Kunyari, sample na lang, passionate kami na i-keep yung schedule namin, Saturday, Monday, minsan Thursday night, magbabasketball kami. Hindi maintindihan ng iba yan. Kasi these, are, these things are um, uh, masculinely discerned. Yung ba, kami lang makakaintindi nun eh. Kaya hindi nyo talaga maintindihan. Kaya minsan, laro na naman, basket, hindi nyo lang naintindihan, ano po, intindihin nyo na lang. Ganun po yun eh. Pero balik, balik, ano lang, singit lang yun para maisingit natin. Every preaching ko kasi nasisingit ko yan eh. Uh, hindi, para sa, hindi para kay Jalil kasi ano naman yan eh. Uh, submissive yan eh. No. Okay, uh, nawala. Okay, balik tayo sa church. Okay, minsan po kasi kaya hindi natin naiintindihan why people are so passionate in every small detail of the church is because we don't understand really. Hindi ganun yung level ng understanding natin sa simbahan. I'm not saying na hindi ko kinokondem yung iba na, na medyo, uh, actually, you should be rebuked kung hindi ganun kaimportante sa'yo ang simbahan. But I believe that everyone has to be in that level. Everyone has to be in the level na sasabihin natin importante ang simbahan. Kahit malit na bagay, importante yan because the church is concerned. Kahit na kahit na sabihin mo lang, these things are para bang kailangan na lang palagasin. No, no. As long as the church is concerned, importante yan. 
Nakalagay po sa palitin natin that the leader's responsibility and every member's responsibility ay makita pa lang na kahit konting bagay na pwedeng pagmulan ng problema, dapat agad ayusin. Why? Because the church is important. The ch- that's the reason why we have all these documents na pinag-aralan natin. We have this, the, the, yung mga lumang church polity, lumang mga uh, articles of faith because these people, uh, uh, nung, nung panahon na yun, they tried their best to preserve it para sa atin. Makita natin yung importansya ng church. Kaya nga po minsan, panoorin natin yung mga, uh, pagbasahin natin yung Pilgrim's Progress, yung mga, uh, the, the time that the church is being persecuted. Baka meron pa sa atin, pang OA naman. Pwede mo namang i-deny na lang na kristyano ka para mabuhay ka eh. But these people, they don't do that. Why? Because the church is important to them. Okay? Not only did Christ uh, love the church and is the head of the church, but also reading the Bible, I see that the apostles always or, or, or often instruct believers, especially the leaders, to protect the church. Marami po tayong verses na makikita sa Bible that, that, that the apostles and the, and the writers of these epistles are instructing people of the church to protect each other. Sabi po dito, first, by maintaining sound doctrine. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. The Bible says, preach the word. Uh, Paul to Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Ibig sabihin dito yung mga errors ng mga tao. You have to be instant in doing that. Rebuke. Some you rebuke privately. Some publicly. Depende sa extent ng kanilang ginawa. Uh, and of course, rebuke using the word of God. Uh, uh, exhort to lift them up to God with all long suffering and doctrine. This is uh, Apostle Paul's, team, uh, Apostle Paul's uh, instruction to Timothy. Titus chapter 1, w- verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. The, apostle, the apostles and, and, and the uh, early church believers know how important the church is. Kaya nilagay nila and instruct nila. Kay, sa, sa mga leaders ng simbahan. And we see that one thing na, na in-instruct sa kanila para protektahan ng simbahan is by maintaining sound doctrine. Kaya po importante ang teaching sa church. Hindi lang po importante yung mga nagtuturo na mag-aral na mabuti, importante din na ang bawat isa ay nakikinig ng mabuti. At nag-aaral din at the same time. Kasi sayang lang, kung magtuturo, hindi naman nakikinig. Tama po ba? Sayang lang yung, yung pagtuturo, sayang lang ang Bible study, sayang lang ang preaching, sayang lang ang Sunday school, sayang lang ang, ang, ang ating question and answer kung hindi rin naman pumapasok sa atin. That's why importante, we, we should maintain a, a, a sound doctrine in the church. Kaya nga po nag-aaral, kaya nagpapakalalim. Why? So that we know that what we're doing is according to the Word of God. Our goal is to do every single thing according to the Word of God. Minsan po sa iba, ang OA naman, hindi naman din, uh, silent din naman ng Bible sa ibang bagay. You know, st- while, while I, I, I continue to study the Word of God, I notice that ma- napaka-konting bagay sa buhay na silent ang Bible. Napaka-konting bagay. Kahit sa pagpapalaki ng anak, kahit sa, sa, sa relasyon nyo ng, 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 ng asawa, kahit sa relasyon mo sa ibang tao, the Bible is filled with principles na dapat nating i-apply. Problema lang, hindi po natin inaaral. Pero minsan lang, nandyan na sa harap mo yung sagot, hindi lang natin binubuksan. Hindi lang po tayo talaga naguhukay ng mga katotohanan sa Bible. Meron po kasi tayong ugali, lalo na sa ating mga nag-Bible school, required tayo magbasa ng Bible araw-araw. Eh. Yung basta makatapos ka lang, oh, naka two chapters na ako, okay na. Pero yung two chapters na parang nagbasa ka lang ng storybook, minsan nga mas, malalo, mas tumatapo pa isip mo sa storybook kaysa sa pagbabasa mo ng Bible. Eh. Pero alam nyo po, ang tunay na pagbabasa at pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos, yung talagang upuan mo, babasahin mo, iintindihin mo at maghapon na nasa isip mo. Yun pa lang, gagamit, yun lang gagamitin ng Panginoon para unti-unti kang i-transform ang iyong sarili para na, na according to the Word of God. And the Bible has the answer to everything. Hindi lang po talaga natin inaaral. Dati nga, <clears throat> ganyan din ang isip ko eh. May mga bagay naman na silent ang Bible, kanya-kanya na lang. No, the Bible is always saying something about that. From the Old to the New Testament, every, every word is important at pwede natin gamitin sa ating, sa ating uh, 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 buhay. Kaya nga po, we should maintain that. Sound teaching. Kaya nga po kami mga, uh, the preachers, ang responsibility namin is to really look into the Word of God and to help the members see the way, uh, see life, see everything in life the way God wants you to see it. Kaya nga po minsan, parang pakilamero naman ng mga yan, no? Kaya minsan parang bang, lahat na lang, pinakailaman, lahat na lang, pinansin, lahat na lang, sinisita. Why? Eh, yun ang trabaho eh. Eh, kung hindi na namin ginawa, eh di, 
wala rin, baka tanggalin pa kami ng Panginoon sa posisyon na binigay sa amin. Para sa school, kung hindi namin gagawin yung trabaho, yari kami kay Milka. Hindi ba kaya dapat gawin yung trabaho? Kung uh, trabaho namin dito is to, to, to take care of the spiritual needs of the people, we should do that faithfully. Kaya huwag kayong magtataka kung pinapakailaman. Okay, decision nyo pa rin naman. Right? Ganyan din po sa akin, uh, kahit pastor, ang pastor natin, tatay ko din. Uh, ganyan din po siya. Magsasabi siya, ganito gawin mo, ganyan gawin mo. Pero sa akin pa rin naman ang decision. Di ba? Uh, is, uh, lately, sabi niya sa akin, pamigay ko si Jelot May May muna bago pag nanganak na si Jelin. Although I see his point na uh, meron namang point, but personally, I don't like to. Kasi, babies ko yun eh, mahal ko sila. Di ba? Pagka paglaki ni JL, mga kapatid niya yung dalawang yun eh. Di ba? So, ayoko. Uh, emotionally, uh, ayoko, ayoko talaga silang pagpamigay. But, the point is, he, kahit natatay ko na siya, pastor ko siya, he always gives me advice. Still, ikaw pa rin naman eh. While you're praying and you're considering the advice of the leaders and you're reading the Bible, God will lead you. Po, ganyan po yun ang era. That's why patuloy po tayo mag-appreciate ng teaching. Mag-appreciate ng doctrine. Kahit mahirap. Ano po yung, yung, uh, uh, yung mga, although matagal akong tumigil, dumalo dun sa Wednesday na Young Pro uh, uh, Bible Study kasi simula nag-asawa ko, uh, tumigil na ako dun because I wanted to spend more time alone studying the Bible. But lately, na na realize ko po na ako yung nilagay ng 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 Panginoon doon so i i should be leading that uh, although ang purpose ko rin para tumigil ako para yung mga men din na nandoon sila rin yung matu- masanay na mag-lead at uh, ma- ng Bible studies but but I, I i i clearly the lord has told me na patu- punta ka you ha- you still have to teach and 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 help each other do sa do sa Bible study kaya minsan yung mga yung pinag-aaralan namin na material ngayon hindi ganoon kadali but then dapat lang, tuloy lang, tuloy lang. You know, someday gagamitin din namin. Someday baka magamit namin sa aming buhay. Someday ito yung mga prinsipyo na magiging mahalaga sa buhay namin. That's why the church is important because we are instructed to protect it by maintaining sound doctrine and by watching out for false teachers. That's why we have to be in constant attitude ng uh, hindi naman judging but in constant examining ng mga na sinasabi sa likod ng pulpito. Okay, hindi hindi po mali na ina-examine niyo yung sinasabi namin. Dapat lang. Dapat lang and you should help us kung mali yung sinabi namin. But uh, uh, the, the Bible, but meron po sa, sa ating panahon ngayon, there is this notion na kung ano yung sinabi sa likod ng pulpito tama na yon. Yun po ang hindi dapat natin i-apply sa simbahan. The, uh, and and, and uh, as we teach, you keep on examining what we teach. Pero pag napatunayan niyo naman tama, wag naman sana magmatigas at sundin. Di po ba? The, the Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 30, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which He has purchased with His own blood. Again, the importance of the church. The church of God which He has purchased with His own blood. Okay? Uh, for I know this by God's revelation to him that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you yung mga false teachers they are compared to wolves because of their cunning craftiness yung kanilang pagiging uh, tuso yung hindi mo talaga namamalayan ayan na sila okay and, and 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 to explain this further hindi sila pumapasok para maging members lang they are entering the church not to be just nominal members sitting there. No, they're entering the church and trying to uh, to show themselves na sila ang authority. Kami ang magtuturo. At yung kanilang pagtuturo ay napaka-subtle na hindi natin minsan mamamalayan na tinitwist na nila ang salita ng Panginoon. Sabi ni sabi dito that uh, after my departing it's either sa pagalis niya or sa pagganyang pagpunta sa langit, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Instead na pinapakain nila ang flock, ginagamit nila yung mga flock para pakainin sila. Yun yung nangyayari. Uh, and also of your own selves shall men arise. Hindi lang po sila minsan nanggagaling sa labas. Minsan nasa loob na talaga sila. Magmamanifest na lang yan. Shall men, uh, shall, shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Sila yung mga uh, uh, nasa loob ng simbahan upang bumulong, upang magsalita against the leadership, upang magsalita against the Bible, and to, to get the loyalty of people from God, to, from the leaders, to themselves. Yun yung ginagawa. And we should be in constant watch sa mga ganitong klaseng tao. Pagka meron po mga pagka po meron mga members na na uh, machismis, mabulong, 
ay parang mali yung sinabi ni ano ah. Tingin mo, mali do? No? Parang mali. Pagka ganun, sabihin mo sa kanya. Yun ang sabihin niya sa kanya. Huwag niyong pag-usapan. Why? Because sino ba yung nag-preach? Eh di kami. Eh di kami yung dapat sabihan. Pagka po meron tao na hindi marunong lumapit at binubulong-bulong, iwasan niyo na po yung ganun klaseng tao. Why? Because wala silang magandang layunin. Okay? Kaya nga po, minsan, ma- minsan mahirap din mag-preach dito eh. Min- Nami-misinterpret. Dahil pala bagala ko yung pagsasalita ko minsan. Mali eh. Okay? Pagka po nagpipreach kami dito, hindi po kami nagpapatama. Actually, nung ako po Bible student, galit na galit ako sa mga ganyang preachers. Nung nagpapatama lang yung bang buong preaching, isang tao lang. Nakakabwisit. Para bang kung hindi lang ako Bible student, talagang tatayo ko, iwanan ko yung nagpipreach. Kulang na lang. First point, first point J, second point O, third point N, fourth point G. Tapos sa'yo na lang talaga nakatingin. Yung mga ganun. Pero wala po namang preacher dito na gano'n ang attitude eh. What we are preaching here is the Word of God. And pag tinamaan ka, well, pasalamat ka. Pasalamat ka, kinokorek ka ng salita ng Panginoon. Pasalamat ka na tinatamaan ka pa. Kasi pag wala lang epekto sa yan, yun, doon ka magtaka. Kaya nga po maganda po yung tinatamaan ng Bible. Hindi po yung, uh, kasi minsan, yun nga yung pinag-aralan namin ng Wednesday, we, we studied that the Bible is true. Okay, the Bible is the Word of God. We should apply it in our lives. Kaso nga lang minsan, sa atin, totoo lang ang Bible pag agree sa atin. Pag hindi na agree sa'yo, hindi na totoo. Kasi madali tayo mag-confess, the Bible is the Word of God. Lalo na sa Pilipinas, uh, most, of, mo, most of you came from the Catholic Church. Kahit Catholic yan, they, they recognize the Bible as the Word of God. But if you examine their lives, hindi ang Word of God ang authority sa buhay nila. Why? Kasi pag yung prinsipyo nila, yung thinking nila, yung decision nila na kinontradict ng Bible, susundin pa nila yung sarili nila. So at the end, sila pa rin ang final authority. Salita na lang yung Bible is the Word of God. Pero hindi na pinapamuhay. Kaso nga lang po, minsan sa simbahan, ganun din. Salita na lang yung Bible is the Word of God. Pero pag kinontra ka na, ayaw mo nang ipamuhay, ikaw pa rin ang final authority. Hindi ang Bible. Agree ka lang pag agree sa'yo. Pag hindi na agree sa'yo, well, well, Uh, yan yung interpretation mo ito yung interpretation ko no, we should take the Bible for what it says and then and, and then and conform our lives towards what the Bible is saying so the apostles instructed believers to protect the church by maintaining sound doctrine and watching for false teachers and also another point the devil is tr- constantly trying to destroy the church alam nyo po kung hindi importante ang simbahan hindi po gagawin ng Diablo yan. Nasirayan ng simbahan. Kung ang simbahan, wala rin naman palang difference na nagagawa sa mundo. Kung ang simbahan na hindi rin naman importante, bakit pa siya susubukan sirain ng Diablo? Pagka-establish ng, ni Kristo ng church, pagka-resurrect niya papunta sa langit, agad nang trumabaho ang Diablo. ba? Diba? Agad na may persecution. Agad nang may tinatanim ng mga tao. 30 years, 20, 30 years removed from the resurrection of Jesus Christ, agad nang may wolves sa loob ng simbahan. Agad nang merong false teachers. How much more sa panahon natin? ba? Diba? The Bible says here in Acts chapter 12, verse 1, Now about the time here the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. We know the context of this. Hindi natin babasahin. Uh, Herod killed uh, uh, James. Tama ba? James, the brother of John. Herod, Herod killed James. At nung, nung pinatay niya si James, secretly, Nalaman ng mga Hudyo, nakita niya that it pleased the Jews. And Herod, being a politician, ang ginawa niya, oh, gusto, yan pala yung gusto ng mga tao, pinapatay ko yung mga Kristiyano, o oh, hanapin niyo pa yung iba, hanapin niyo si Peter, hanapin yung iba, papatayin natin yan. At the day of the feast, papatayin natin sa harap ng mga tao. Ganyan ang ginagawa sa kanila. Okay, few years removed from the resurrection of Christ, that is the persecution they were, uh, that they were facing. The devil is in constant work sa pagsim- pagsira ng simbahan. And he's still in constant work today. Marahil walang pinupugutan sa atin. Marahil walang kinukulong sa atin uh, because of the preaching of the word. Well, marahil walang uh, pumupunta mga pulis dyan and threatening to kill us. But uh, the devil is still at work in other ways sa panahon natin. Ano pong ginagawa? The devil is working in the government. The devil is working uh, uh, na para, para magkaroon ng mga batas na, 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 na makikita kung i-compromise ba natin ang faith natin o hindi. The devil is still continuing to plant uh, 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 false believers in the church. It's still happening. That's why we still should be in constant watch for the work of the devil. Lagi po natin yan, ano, minsan po hindi ang church ay sinisira ng jablo, ang mga family sa simbahan. Because a, a strong church is consists of strong families. And once strong families are destroyed, there will be no strong church. 
Kaya minsan ang si ang ang kaya nga po yung mga father ng pamilya, da, yung mga fathers dapat constant watch din tayo sa pamilya. Why? Because the devil can destroy your family and then wala na. 'Di ba? Kaya nga even the music, bantayan natin. Even the movies we watch, bantayan natin because we we, we know that that these are the tools of the devil. Minsan hindi lang po natin pinapansin. Minsan nakapasok na sa mind ng mga bata, hindi natin alam. Minsan na minsan bata pa lang sila pag paglaki nila meron ng mga uh, uh, mga nasa kanilang mga subconscious na sinuggest ng diablo through what they're watching, through what they're listening to, through what they are saying, through what they're singing. Kaya nga po that we should be in uh, uh, constant one because watch because the devil is trying to destroy the church. Hindi na nga po masyadong obvious ngayon yung pagde-destroy ng devil sa church. Minsan ang laki ng simbahan, kala natin strong church, but that is already a destroyed church. Diba? Kasi hindi na po nagbibigay ng glory sa Panginoon. Okay? Uh, if, even, even sa uh, early, early times, Apostle Paul himself, isa siya sa pinaka uh, uh, matindi mag, mag, uh, uh, persecute ng simbahan. Why? Because the Apostle Paul believes in what he believed back then. Diba? Naniniwala siya na itong mga Kristiyano na to, they're blasphemy, blasphemous. They're saying that Christ is the Messiah, hindi Messiah si Kristo. That's why he's uh, uh, trying to kill them, trying to persecute them, but then God changed him. Okay? Uh, uh, the The church is important because the devil is trying to destroy it. Kung hindi po importante, hindi niya sisirain. Uh, next point, Christ, even though the devil is destroying the church, Christ is constantly protecting the church. First, by watching over it. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you. Establish us where? In our faith, in the doctrine, in what we believe in. Establish us because God is the one, is, uh, is the one who gave us this faith. He's the one who's establishing us in faith. He's the one who will finish our faith. He's the one who's giving us all the strength to move on. Okay, kaya nga po yung, yung, pag, yung, yung pag-encourage ng Panginoon sa atin through the Word of God, pag-encourage ng Panginoon sa atin through praying, it, this is one way na, na ginagamit ng Panginoon para maprotektahan ang simbahan. Okay, Christ is protecting the church, not only by watching over it, um, it it's also, also by appointing faithful men to lead. Titus and Timothy, makita po natin yung, yung high standard na gusto ng Panginoon sa mga leaders ng simbahan. Why? Because He wants people na nakaya ang protection na ng, ang simbahan. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 says, And He gave some apostles, which alam natin wala na ngayon, and some prophets, these are men, special men, back then, who, who knows how to interpret the scriptures. Uh, and some evangelists, ito po yung mga preachers of the, word of, uh, of the gospel of Christ, uh, and some pastors and teachers, ito po yung mga bishops, overseers, deacons, elders of the church, binigay po ng Panginoon ng bawat isang yan, para po maproteksyonan ang simbahan. That's why even though pinipreach natin sa, sa, sa simbahan na ito that our loyalty should be to God, but still we should respect the people that God has placed in authority. Dapat po makita natin yung balance. Because makita po natin sa Bible, hindi naman po ang, ang responsibility po sa relationship ng leaders at members. Binigay sa members. Ano ba nakasulat? Obey them. Nasa inyo yung responsibility to obey them. That is your God-given responsibility, God-given admonition to obey authority. Okay, of course we know the balance of that. Obey them as they continue to obey the Lord. But we should not disrespect authority. Why? Because God placed these people for the church. God placed these people for the protection of the church. Bakit? Sunod na natin yung next point because it will be in the next verse. Because the church is important for believers. Why? Verse 12. Ephesians 4.12 for, bakit daw binigay itong mga to? Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, which is what we are doing, okay, which God has enabled us to do, for the edifying of the body, okay, till we all come in the unity of faith. Ibig sabihin, patuloy lang, patuloy lang, serve each other, encourage each other, till we all come in the unity of the faith that God has given us. Um, And of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children. That is the goal of this church. That's the reason why there's preaching. That's the reason why there's ministering. That's the reason why there is encouraging each other. That we be no more children. 
Ibig sabihin ng children na to hindi children of God or children of the devil. That means, hindi na tayo parang bata sa ating understanding. Nakaka- hanggang lahat tayo magiging nakakaintindi. You know, minsan po kasi, uh, uh, an- ano, yung, ano yung, yung ano dito ng children? Children are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Minsan po, matagal lang kristyano, bata pa ang pag, pagka, uh, pag-iis, hindi naman pag-iisip. Sabihin, bata pa sa understanding sa salita ng Panginoon. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng as unto babes in Christ. Kaya nga sabi ni Paul sa Corinth, I, I cannot speak to you na, na parang uh, meet ang ibig ko sa inyo kasi hindi nyo kaya. You're still like babes in Christ. Ibig sabihin niya ng babes doon, hindi, hindi ibig sabihin bago sila. Ibig sabihin, hindi kasi kayo makaintindi. Yun ang sinasabi ni Paul. Simpleng bagay na lang, hindi nyo maintindihan. Ang kakarnal nyo naman. Yun ang sinasabi ni Paul. You're babes in Christ. Sabi ng Bible, the church is given... The fellowship of the church, the leaders of the church, all of these are given so that we will be no more like children. Hindi na ganun yung pagintindi natin. Kaya dapat habang, tum- habang, habang tumatagal, habang as time goes on, lahat tayo nakakaintindi na. Kaya kaso nga lang po, kaya minsan may problema pa, meron pang mga hindi makaintindi. Hindi nila maintindihan bakit ginagawa. Hindi nila maintindihan bakit, bakit ini-implement. Hindi nila maintindihan bakit kailangan pa mag-reorganize, kailangan pang gawin lahat ng to. Ang hirap, ang daming problema. Pwede namang masaya na lang. Every Sunday, we meet each other, we sing, we preach, we laugh, kainan pag minsan, pag may birthday party. Minsan kasi ganun lang ang tingin natin sa simbahan. We don't understand the church. We, uh, hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng tamang understanding. We're like children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slates of man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Ito yung hinahanap ng jablo. Yung mga nakasimbahan na, yung mga nakaupo na, pero madali pa rin lukohin. Okay? Because they're not studying. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This is the reason why church is important. Dito tayo lalago. Dito tayo patuloy na magmamature. Okay? Last point dito sa ating introduction. Important because it has uh, an important role in the world. Meron pong importanteng role ang simbahan sa panahon natin. Imagine all these laws in America being passed. Imagine all these evil people sitting in the government. Kung wala pang mga Kristiyano at simbahan na naninindigan, paano pa kaya ngayon? I believe that somehow the church is uh, uh, napapabagal yung kanilang progress. Somehow. Even though hindi natin napapansin. I believe somehow medyo nagdadalawang isip sila because there are people still standing. I believe somehow hindi pa sila ganun ka talaga ka, 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 kasama because there's still people speaking against them. Imagine natin kung wala, tanggalin natin lahat ng church sa simbahan, sa, sa, sa mundo. This will happen someday. Aalisin lahat ng kristyano, there will be chaos in the world. Because the church role is important right now. Kaya important yung simbahan. Kaya nga sabi sa Timothy, evil man shall wax worse and worse. But the church should be the one to keep on proclaiming the truth and to keep on living the truth, and to keep on giving good testimony, and to keep on preaching the gospel, because that is the only, that is the only chance that this world will still be para bang medyo civilized pa, hindi pa ganun kagulo. And if you read the, if you read the book of uh, Revelation, may kita natin, gaano kagulo ang mundo kung wala ng mga Kristiyano. Wala na ang church. The church is important because of that. And because of all these reasons, because Christ established the church, because Christ loved the church, because He's the head of the church, because the apostles told us to protect the church, because the devil is trying to destroy the, to destroy the church, because Christ, despite of that, is protecting the church, because it, was import, it is important to us, and it is important even to this world. Ganyan po ka-importante ang simbahan. And, and uh, 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 we will just focus here. Balik tayo sa ating text. What should our attitude be inside the church? Ano po ba dapat agturin natin sa simbahan? Knowing all these things. You know, ito pong Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Lagi po ito sa mga uh, weddings. Okay? Especially pag ang preaching, ginagamit to for, for, for the uh, relationship of husband and wife. Rightly so. Okay? Kasi nakasulat naman yun sa Bible. But verse 32 here, punta tayo sa verse 32, is very clear. Uh, Ephesians 5.32 Wala dito sa notes ko kasi. Very clear po dito. The reason why Paul is saying all these things 
is because it's con it concerns Christ and the church. Ang primary application po dito is for Christ and the church. Okay? Kinukumpara lang po yan sa relationship ng husband and wife. So that means dapat as we read this, this and, and, and okay lang naman na i-apply natin sa ating buhay bilang a husband and wife, but ang primary application at thinking natin dapat Christ and the church. While we are reading this, okay, kaya uh, first here, ano po ba yung, yung dapat nating attitude sa church? First, number one, we are to submit to the church's authority. Nakalagay po dito sa verse 22, medyo magtagal akong konti dito, mga one hour. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Kahit po ulit-ulitin lang natin basahin yan, blessing po yung verse na yan. Ano po yan? Eh, uh, life verse. Nang iba, hindi po sa akin. Okay, Lord, submit yourselves to your husbands. Submit means to recognize authority. To recognize that someone has an authority over you. Okay? To, uh, hindi, po, hindi rin naman po ibig sabihin that you submit ay inferior ka. Hindi rin naman po ibig sabihin. Hindi po porke sumunod ka kay pastor, eh, mas magaling siya talaga. No. You submit because God told you to submit. Simple as that. Okay? Wives, submit yourself to the husband. Makita po muna natin dito that even in this chapter, verse 1 pa lang, Paul has been tackling submission. Chapter 5, verse 1, submission to God. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Submitting to God means knowing what He wants and doing what He wants. Okay? The Bible says that if you know God's will and if you do God's will, you're smart, you're wise. Verse 17, okay? Not only submission to God, but chapter, same chapter, verse 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise. Okay? Ma pangit pong tawagin ng isang tao na mangmang o bobo. Pero sabi ng Bible, sino daw itong mga unwise na ito? Those who do not know the will of God and those who do not submit to the will of God. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay? First, sabi sa verse 1, submission to God. And then, meron dito submission to His will. Okay? Another one is verse number 21, submitting to one another. Verse 21 uh, says, submitting yourselves one to another. That means members submitting to pastor, younger uh, 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 people submitting to the, to the elders, minority submitting to the majority, everyone submitting to each other. Okay? The, the, the topic of submission, boom, chapter 5 po, tinatakal ni Paul. Why? Because we are to submit to the church. And then, at, nagbabad lang siya dito sa example ng wives to the husband. Okay, let's see the comparison of the wife's submission to the husband. Sabi dito, verse 22, tama ba? Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Ayan po, meron dito dalawang interpretation na pro-wife, pro-husband. Yung isa ay pro-husband. Yung iba, sinasabi, wives should submit themselves to the husband, nakalikas dito, as unto the Lord. Ibig sabihin, kung paano kang mag-submit sa Panginoon, ganun dapat sa husband. Ibig sabihin, final kung ano sabihin ng husband. Ibig sabihin daw, pag sinabi ng asawa mong lalaki, dapat gawin mo because that is how you will obey the Lord. That's how you should obey your husband. That is the wrong interpretation. Another interpretation is uh, 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 pro-wife naman. Sinasabi naman ng mga ibang uh, wives ay nakalagay dyan, as unto the Lord, submit only to your husband as he is submitting to the Lord. Ibig sabihin, susundin ko lang yung husband ko pag tama yung sinasabi niya. Ang danger naman dito, gagawin naman ng wife ay siya na yung final authority. Siya na ang maghuhusga kung tama ba sinasabi ng husband o hindi. And then, pag tama, oh, okay, susundin ko. Hindi pa, hindi pa rin pagsasubmit yun. Ikaw pa rin yung final authority nun. Hindi pa rin ang Diyos. Hindi pa rin yung husband. Ikaw pa rin. Kasi ikaw ang magja-judge ng tama at mali ngayon. Right? So, one is pro- husband, one is pro-wife. But, but the, the uh, proper uh, interpretation of this is, wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord you are to submit yourself to, to, to your husband just because the Lord says so. That's it. Okay? That means you're submitting to your husband is your expression of your obedience to the Lord. Okay? You are submitting yourself to your husband because you want to glorify the Lord and obey His admonition to you as submitting to your husband. Yun yung, yun yung, pag, yun yung pagsasubmit ng wife uh, 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 sa husband. This goes beyond your personality. This goes beyond na Ganito ako eh, kaya hindi kita kayang sundin. No, kung, kung meron tayong ganong klaseng attitude, hindi pa tayo handa na sundin ang Panginoon. Pagdating sa marriage, okay? Not in, not in something else. Pinag-uusapan natin dito ang marriage. That's why yung mga babae dapat pakapili-pili din. Hindi lang yung lalaki yung pumipili, babae din. Bakit? Kasi kaya mo bang magpasubmit? Kasi pag nagpakasal ka dyan, 
You're telling God, Lord, I'm willing to obey you and submit to this man. Kung hindi ka handa, no. Why? Because you will be disobeying God. Okay? Mali yung sinasabi niya eh, pinakasalan mo. That's why, single ka pa lang, pinagpe-pray na. Kaya nga po dapat yung mga uh, ibang single dyan, kahit na sabi natin ayaw nila mag-asawa, pinagpe-pray pa rin nila dapat yun. Bakit? Kasi para ihanda sila ng Panginoon. Diba, as, as, uh, ang pagkakaintindihin ko, pagkakaintindi ko po sa prayer kasi, hindi yung pinipilit mo ang Panginoon nagsundin yung gusto mo eh. Ang pagkakaintindi ko po sa prayer, yung nagpe-pray ka sa Panginoon para as you pray to Him, He will mold you and, and your will ay iaalay niya sa will niya. Unti-unti ka niyang babaguhin. Kaya kahit bata ka pa, nagpe-pray ka na, sana po Panginoon, uh, handa, uh, uh, bigyan niyo po ako ng lalaki, may takot sa inyo, ihanda niyo po ako. Alam mo, as you grow older, i-mold ka ng Panginoon into the wife that knows how to submit to the husband. And if you faithfully pray for that and read the Bible and, and, and do all these things, bibigyan ka ng Panginoon ng lalaki na kaya mo magpasubmit sa kanya. Kaya nga po minsan, kasalanan mo rin, nagpakasal ka at ayaw magpasubmit. Di ba? Kaya pagka, Sinabi maglalaro, paglaruin mo lang. Kasama po sa submission yon Okay? Hindi lang nakasulat dito, pero yun yung implication. Okay? Kanyari, laro ako. Okay, I support you. I'll pray for you. Pagdating mo, may, mag- may pagkain, may ano, whatever. Okay? Handa lahat yan. Yun yung submission. Okay? You're just saying yes to God. Okay? Joking aside, at least naisingit ko na yan. I, again, I'm satisfied. Again, uh, why submitting yourself to us own husband as unto the Lord? Okay? Uh, this talks about authority. Sabi ko, hindi ako, I will not Dwell on this. So move on. Okay? Uh, oh, but again, uh, na, na, kaligtaan ko dito. This means, sa panahon natin, is going against the norm. Yung wives submitting to the husband, this is now against the norm. Para po sa, sa panahon kasi natin ngayon, hindi na, hindi na uso yung, uh, uh, yung, yung mga traditional, hindi yung traditional, biblical wife. Hindi na uso. Ang uso ngayon is uh, woman power. Who run the world, girls? Who run the world, girls? Hindi po biblical yun. Okay? Hindi po kayo ang nagpapatakbo ng mundo. Hindi nga kayo nagpapatakbo ng pamilya. World pa kaya. Hindi ba? So this means you're going against us. So that means sa mga babae, lalo na sa mga mag-aasawa dyan, kung hindi ka pahanda na magpasubmit, wag muna. Wag muna. Postpone mo. No, kasi totoo yun. Ikaw ang magkakasala sa Panginoon. As long as you're not submitting to the husband, you're disobeying God's command to you directly to submit to your husband. Okay? O, oh, yun lang. Hindi ako marunong mag-preach sa mga lalaki, sa babae lang eh. Ha, sa wife lang. Okay? Okay, so, comparison. Yun yung comparison, authority. Okay? That, uh, next point. Christ is the head of the church. Kristo ang authority ng simbahan. So, as the wives is commanded to submit to the husband, we are commanded to submit to Christ. The church. Every one of us. Nakalagay dito, for the husband is the head of the wife. Napag-aralan natin. Even as Christ... Verse 23 but oh, is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body therefore as the church is subject unto Christ we uh, therefore as the subject as church is subject to Christ wives should be subject to the husband Christ is the divinely appointed head of the church nilagay po ng nilagay po ng pang, uh, 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 si Cristo as a head of the church for one purpose and one purpose alone for us to submit to his authority okay and we can find his authority in the bible We can find what He wants us to do as a church in the Bible. Kaya nga po patuloy natin, kinoconform sa, sa Bible ang ating mga rules, ang ating mga polity, ang ating mga gawain, ang ating mga preaching, ang ating mga ministries. Patuloy natin kinoconform sa Bible. Why? Because yun naman lang point dapat. Kasi kung ang nasusunod na lang ay yung gusto ng pastor, yung gusto lang ng leaders, then Christ is not the head of this church. Pero kung nasusunod ay ang Biblia, ang salita ng Panginoon, then Christ is really the head of this church. Why? Because Christ is our hope. Christ is the provider of this church. Christ is the Savior of the church. Christ is the one who's giving us comfort. Christ is the one giving us joy. Kaya dapat sa Kanya tayo magpasubmit. Okay? So, uh, 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 the church, Christ loving the church, also means that we are to submit to the authority of the church. Let's uh, move on. Anong oras na ba? 3.11 Second point, Christ loves His church. Kung hindi pa po importante sa atin ng simbahan, after all of these things na sinabi ko, knowing that Christ loves the church, dapat po yung palang maging importante sa atin ng simbahan. Okay, nakalagay dito, husbands, love your wives. Hindi ko po to alam i-interpret. Na joke lang. Ibig sabihin po nito, simple, simple, uh, simple command. Husbands, love your wives. 
Husbands, love your wives. Now, in many different ways, by respecting them, by seeking uh, for, for what they, uh, na, na kundi magpapasaya sa kanila. Okay? By bringing them closer to the Lord. By leading them spiritually. This is how you can love your wife. Okay? Husbands, love your wives. And, and praise the Lord, ganito po ang mga husbands sa simbahan na ito. Okay? Ginagawa po nila yan. They love their wives. Kaya dapat yung mga wives magpasubmit sa ganitong klaseng mga husband. Okay? Uh, okay. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. Ito po yun. And gave himself for it. Gave himself for it. Gaano po kaimportante ang simbahan kay Kristo na ibibigay niya ang kanyang sarili para sa simbahan? Gaano kaimportante ang simbahan sa'yo kumpara sa importance na, binibigay, na binigay ni Kristo sa simbahan? Kumpara po natin ang puso natin sa puso ni Kristo sa simbahan. That is, that is my challenge today, this afternoon. Gaano kaimportante ang simbahan sa'yo? Okay? Paatend lang ba tayo pag convenient? Dadalo lang po ba tayo pagka okay ang pakiramdam natin? Dadalo lang po ba tayo pag emotionally okay tayo? Dadalo lang po ba tayo pag financially okay tayo? You know, Christ gave Himself for the church. Are you willing to give yourself to the church? Minsan, pera lang natin hindi natin kayang ibigay. Oras lang natin hindi natin kayang ibigay. How much more our own selves giving it to the church? Okay? Uh, even as Christ and gave Himself for it. What love this, that, that uh, uh, Christ have for the church? And again, that is the love that husbands should have for their wives. Okay? Let me put it this way. Lahat po kami mga lalaki, we have a general love for everyone. Kasi hindi, uh, Christ commanded us to love. But we have this special love for our wives. Okay? Mahal namin lahat, pero special yung pagmamahal sa asawa. Ganun din si Kristo. The Bible says Christ loved the world. Okay? He died for everyone. But He has this special love for the church. Ganon din po tayo. We love a lot of groups of people. We love our jobs. We love uh, uh, everything, yung mga grupo natin sa labas. But the Bible says, have a special love for the people of God. Do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the house of the faith. This is a command. Sabi ng Bible, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. This is a command. Ibig sabihin ng Panginoon, mahalin mo ang simbahan. Mahalin mo yung mga tao sa simbahan. Kahit na hindi ganun kadaling mahalin. You still have to do that. You need to protect the church. You need to give yourself for the church. Give your time, talent, money to the church. Why? Because God loves the church. This should be, this should be, this should, uh, uh, ganun to dapat kaya importante ang, ang simbahan sa atin. That He might sanctify and cleanse it. Okay? With the washing of water. Now, pwede sabi natin with the blood of Christ or this is baptism. But the point here is, guys, is continually uh, uh, um, cleansing, purifying the church. Sabi dito, by the word. Okay? Uh, ibig sabihin, using the word of God, the gospel, the, the, yung Bible na pinipreach natin. That's the reason why ito yung pinipreach natin. Bakit? Para patuloy tayong maging makonform sa kung anong gusto sa atin ni, ng Panginoon. Not only that just He sanctifies it, but the reason why Christ loved the church is only and solely for His glory alone. Sabi dito, that He might present it to Himself a glorious church. Now, this refers to something in the future. Not having spot or wrinkle. Sigurado hindi yun ngayon. Kasi maraming spot and wrinkle lang simbahan. There's no perfect search. Wala pong perfectong simbahan. Lahat may mali. Lahat ng palitin ng simbahan may butas. Lahat ng rules ng simbahan pwedeng may mali. Hindi po, wala tayong pwedeng sabihin na kahit na ano pang pag-aaral natin, hindi magiging perfect ngayon ang simbahan. But someday, sabi ng, ng Bible, someday He will present it to Himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Someday, He will present the church as perfect and will bring Him glory. Pero po, hindi ibig sabihin na walang perfect church. Ayun na excuse natin. We should still be constantly uh, strive for perfection. We should still constantly strive to glorify the Lord in the church. Kaya nga po, gawin natin ang makaya natin para at least lumapit tayo doon. Kaya pinoprotektahan na natin ngayon. Hindi na basta-basta pwedeng maging member. Bakit? Baka nga naman ginagamit ng jablo yung papasok para sirain ng simbahan. We should protect the church. Okay? Kaya nga po sana, someday, even though someday pa lang ito, ngayon pa lang, yun na dapat yung image, yung ating uh, vision a perfect, a pure, a church with no wrinkle, even though napaka-imposible naman yan, yes. But that doesn't mean we should not strive for it. Kasi what should we strive for? Kung hindi lang din yun. Okay? What should we strive for? 
As long as patuloy nating naayos ang simbahan, lalo to nagbibigay ng glory sa Panginoon. Until someday we will bring Him the ultimate glory. Okay? In the future. There is an ultimate glory someday, but we should still seek to glorify God in the church today. Okay? Again, the challenge this afternoon is this. You saw how important the church is to God, Christ, to the early believers, to the apostles, how important it is for people today, how important it is for you and me, how important it is for the world today. Ngayon ang tanong po, gaano ba sa'yo personally, gaano ka-importante ang simbahan? Okay? Meron pa ba tayo minsan na thinking na ang corny naman ang ginagawa? May pa-meeting-meeting pa. Dati wala naman. Di ba? Dati wala naman tawag-tawag ng meeting. Bahala na si pastor. Bahala siya kung anong gusto niyang desisyon. Bakit ngayon? May deacons pa. Okay? Paboto-boto pa ng deacons. Alam naman ako sino yung ilalagay. Boto-boto pa ng pastor. Alam naman ako sino yung ilalagay. Alam po, ginagawa natin to para lang maitama. Kung meron po tayong ganong klaseng thinking, kapatid, repent of that. And, and, and put the church in its proper place in your life. Ibig sabihin, mas importante sa trabaho mo. Ibig sabihin, mas importante sa mga cares of this world. Ibig sabihin, mas importante ang mga kasama natin sa loob kaysa sa mga tao sa labas. Ibig sabihin, eto na po sa Cambodia, eto na po ang mga pinaka-importanting tao dapat sa buhay natin. Etong mga kasama natin sa loob. The church. Kaya nga po, kung hindi pa po ganun ang puso natin, kapatid, dapat po yun ang pag natin. Bring it to the Lord, Panginoon. Meron po akong mga hindi kayang mahalin sa simbahan. Help me. Lord, hindi ko po maibigay lahat ng, 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 uh, ng uh, akin sa simbahan. Lord, help me. Lord, hindi ko po, hindi ko po kayang, ewan ko po, ba't hindi ako makapag-offering? Lord, help me. Lord, hindi ko po maibigay yung best ko sa ministry. Lord, help me. Lord, sana po mamahal ko ang simbahan the way that you love this church. And, and, and through all our imperfections and differences, sana po patuloy tayo until we all come to the unity of the faith. Submitting to one another as we submit to Christ. Let us uh, pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for our short time of uh, preaching. I pray, Lord, that you continue to